Long ago, the nine fragrance family shifters roamed the earth. There was a fragrance family that was big, a family that was armored. There was even one that looked like a monkey. Guys, today we're answering the question, how are fragrances classified? If you haven't seen this video where I teach you guys how to start off your collection, that video covers how you should start it off based on the scenarios you want to wear your fragrance. I'll give you guys a second, I'll wait here patiently, go ahead and watch that. So this video goes into more advanced fragrance collecting. The idea is you learn which fragrances to get in your collection based on the notes that you like. Obviously there are thousands of fragrance notes out there in perfumery, so this is what perfumers actually use to classify fragrances. This is their own classification system from the French Society of Perfumers and it's based on a broad fragrance family system where the fragrance focuses on a particular set of notes to give off a certain vibe. This video will go through the traditional seven fragrance families from the male perspective with an additional two subfamilies that I'm throwing in for you guys. I'll go through each family with you, give you examples of each, and you'll get a good impression of the vibe that each family gives off as you're wearing these fragrances. Let's get into it. Class is in session. Guys, if you wanna jump straight to the video, go to this timestamp. But before we go on guys, I just wanna to talk to you about our private WhatsApp group called the Atrium of Scent. I think we all appreciate with the pandemic and how isolated a lot of people feel these days, community is more important than ever. The idea of our Atrium is to create a close tight-knit group of individuals who can just nerd out about fragrances whenever they want. It does have a small monthly fee to it to support the channel, but you'll get 24 seven access to myself, a fragrance community from all over the world, a behind the scenes look at our creation process, and early access to our content. Plus we do weekly Zoom meetups and in the future I hope to do physical meetups also. I'll leave a link in the description where you can gain access. Let's get into the video. Family number one are the citruses. These are the lemons, the oranges, the bergamots, the yuzus. If you go in Fragrantica, you'll see that most fragrances have a citrus as one of their top notes. Basically, it means any fragrance that's dominated by citrus notes is going to be usually shorter lasting, but it's going to be more fresh, sharp, invigorating. They're usually warm weather scents. I'm talking about citrus fragrances like Atelier Cologne's Orange Sanguine. This literally smells like you're spraying fresh orange juice on your skin. Impressively realistic, but it's short lasting. Or you have the more traditional mainstream Bulgari's Man Extreme, which still has a few types of citruses in it, but it's a bit longer lasting from having some woods and vetiver to balance it out. There's not much more to say about this family. Because people know what citruses are, you'll usually know what you're getting if you're focusing on a fragrance that's citrus dominated. Also guys, I've already referenced Fragrantica, but that is the best tool to see what kind of family a fragrance is in. There's usually some bars near the top of the page where the community votes what the fragrance focuses on in terms of its notes. Next up are the florals. These are a bit more creative to use in men's perfumery. I think as a society and maybe even biologically, we associate floral scents with women and femininity. There's generally brighter, cleaner white florals that get a bit darker as you go along all the way to the roses. For example, Neroli is a commonly used floral note in men's fragrances to keep a fragrance bright and clean. Versace Pour Homme is a very safe white floral fragrance. It has the brightness of the florals, but at the same time, it's still very masculine, musky. You go a bit darker, a little bit less safe, a bit more interesting, go for something like Moschino's Toy Boy. I think Toy Boy uses two different types of rose in it. It's interesting, it could be feminine if it didn't balance it out with the masculine notes it has in here. If you wanna have a memorable fragrance, put some rose in there, that's all I'm saying. Third family, I don't mean to flex with you with my French, but these are called the fougères, which means fern in French. To make things a bit more simple for us mere mortals, think barbershop fragrances that traditionally use lavender and oak moss. In the olden days, this was the mainstream scent profile for men's fragrances. Think traditionally masculine soapy fragrances. The most obviously barbershop scent you can smell today, still a top seller on Amazon, is Dracar Noir. Dirt cheap, blatantly barbershop, but it does smell a little bit outdated and doesn't last long than two hours. A more modern barbershop will be something like Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mal or Carven Low Intense, made by the same perfumer who made Le Mal. This takes a lot of the lavender from barbershop fragrances but makes it more modern, a lot of mint. So if you want a cooling, minty, fresh fragrance, 
check this one out. The brand which I would see as the king of barbershop scents would be Aqua de Parma. Definitely check out the Colonia line. Family number four, more French, the Chypre family, which just means Cyprus in French. Traditionally associated with combining oak moss, labdanum and patchouli. It's a bit of an old school concept. In my opinion, we should focus on the most relevant notes in that trio today. That is patchouli. How would I describe patchouli? A dark leafy note that's a little bit sharp, a tiny bit sweet, and smells interesting and mysterious and complex. One of the most famous examples being this bad boy, Tom Ford's Black Orchid. Black Orchid is sweet and unisex, but it's definitely still dark. A lot of guys like to use this as their signature because it definitely makes you stand out. But I think you should be masculine enough to balance out the femininity, the femininity of this fragrance. Or a more traditionally masculine patchouli is Lalique's Encre Noir Extreme. 25 pounds, you're getting a fragrance that smells Niche, in my opinion. I think this is the best from the Encre Noir line. It smells dark, musky, woody, but still masculine. Again, it gives off that mysterious dark vibe. Overall, the message is patchouli-based fragrances give off a mysterious aura to yourself and can make you stand out in that way and make people want to find out more about you. Now we're going into the masculine territory of the woods. So kind of like how florals are seen as feminine. In my opinion, I think woody fragrances are seen traditionally as more masculine. Although most products have some sort of woody notes in there to give longevity and some structure for the perfumers to use. Woody fragrances are going to be more safe for us men. For example, Chanel's Allure Homme Sports. Most people would say this should be in a different family, but for me, on my skin, this smells particularly woody. It smells like a smooth cedar woody fragrance that's a little bit powdery, a lot of elegance, versatility in this fragrance, whilst Tom Ford's Oud Wood is unmistakably in this family. Oud fragrances are in this family because Oud is a type of wood that's kind of rotting, very rare, expensive, but that's a different video. This has Oud as well as other woody notes in here, making this very sharp, in my opinion, a little bit smoky. It's a very safe Oud to start out with. It has a nice bit of sweetness on its dry down, making it overall sexy. If you want something safe that smells traditionally masculine, go for this family, the woods. Then we have the leathers. Not a necessary fragrance type to have in your collection, but I think it adds some edge, some diversity, and gives a little bit of pop to your fragrance game. Leather fragrances are an acquired taste. They are animalic because, of course, leather is from a cow. But if you want to get into them and experience leather fragrances, I would say start off with Tom Ford's Ombre Leather, a good beginner leather scent. This has some floral, some oak moss, all these other notes to balance it out, but this is unmistakably focused on the leather. That is the main character here. It is apparent throughout its duration. Or instead of being the main character, perfumers use leather with other notes to create a sort of vibe in a perfume, such as Bulgari's Man in Black. It's spicy, sweet, but also with leather in here. This smells beautiful, but mature in my opinion, and creates a very suave vibe for an evening in cold weather. Overall, the leather note can help create you a bad boy leather jacket vibe. It's a bit smoky, animalic, or it can be used to create a suave vibe for yourself. And last but not least, for those of you with a sweet tooth, the last major fragrance family are the Orientals. These are perfumes that focus on balsamic notes. What does that mean? Basically means vanilla, amber, anything resinous, sweet. Orientals traditionally use spices to go with these sweet notes, hence the name describing the region these notes would come from. Let's start off with the classic. Yup Om, a cheap Oriental. It uses a spice, cinnamon, with a lot of vanilla. It is affordable, but it's a beast in longevity it can overpower people pure sweetness to attack people's noses and grab people's attention but if you want to calm it down a bit go for something like Paco Band's one million privé the spicy note again is the cinnamon but it has balsamic notes like myrrh and tonka this is still definitely sweet but it's a bit more close in its projection more smooth higher quality a good date night option within designer fragrances so any notes like amber vanilla tonka bean myrrh benzoin these are all sweet notes in general a spice with one of these notes is an oriental fragrance. They are sweet, 
safe and sexy. Going straight into my two bonus subfamilies, to bring this list to a total of nine to keep in line with the Attack on Titan reference, Orientals can go less in the spicy direction and can instead be a gourmand, which is a fragrance that is decadent, rich, a lot of sweetness still, but it's trying to replicate something edible. For example, Montal's Chocolate Greedy. Can you guys guess what this is replicating? I would say this is 60% vanilla. The vanilla note is more prominent, but then 40% is chocolate. This makes it smell like an intense, milky bar of chocolate. Most gourmand can be safely marketed as unisex. These are for guys who really want that diabetic fragrance in their lives. You have to have a super sweet tooth. And then I should mention fruity fragrances. You don't traditionally see men's fragrances having fruit as a main focus point. It's usually seen more in women's fragrances. But just know that the brighter the fruit, such as an orange sanguine, you're gonna get a brighter fragrance, but the darker a fruit's color, let's say you have something like a raspberry or blackcurrant, like you do in black orchids, you're gonna get a more dark fruit nuance in there. Overall, guys, this classification system is very general, very broad. Obviously, a lot of fragrances mix and cross over in lots of different families. This video is meant to give you an idea of what kind of scents you're into or want to check out. So don't focus too much on the terminology here. Focus more on the vibes, guys. Positive vibes only. And with that, we have finished the video. Check out this video where I review 10 of your number one date night fragrances. I'll see you in the next one. Class dismissed.